Awesome. Welcome back. We are in the final message in our sermon series titled, God Wrote a Book. And we have spent the last few weeks just really diving in to God's word, the Bible. Listen, it is a journey. We have been on a journey together. We started this journey because we know that the Bible is something that really intimidates a lot of believers, not just young believers, but all believers. And that's why so many times as believers, we don't get into our Bibles and study the scriptures because we're so intimidated by it. So this series was all about breaking down those walls. You'll remember in week one, we came and we really just talked about getting comfortable with our Bible. And as we talked through being comfortable in our Bibles, we thought about how, you know, just some, some basic facts, some things about what the Old Testament is, what the Gospels are, what the New Testament is. And then last week, we spent all of our time talking about dwelling in God's Word. If you'll remember, this whole series, we've been very intentional about not using the word read, right? We don't really read God's Word. What we do is we dwell. Dwell is this idea of having a relationship with God's word where we are in it every day. And it really doesn't matter whether we read a sentence or a scripture or a chapter or an entire book of the Bible. That's what we mean by dwelling. Dwelling is a relationship. And last week, we, we even started a program where we dwell together. And I'm gonna talk about that at the end of this message again because I wanna make sure that no matter where you're at, you're joining us on this journey. But tonight, I'm really excited because tonight we're gonna jump into a topic um, that again, I think just absolutely is one of the biggest reasons um, that, that believers stay away from studying God's word and that is they say that they can't understand it. I just don't understand it. That when I, when I take something in, when I study it, when I study a scripture or study a chapter or a book, of the Bible, I just don't understand what it's saying. So tonight, I just wanna tear down those walls, I just wanna break down those barriers, because listen, you can absolutely understand this, and I'm gonna teach you tonight how we do that. So listen, I'm gonna take you, if you've got your Bible, and you should, remember every single week, we're gonna have our physical Bibles with us. So go ahead and grab your Bible. I want you to flip to the book of John, and I want you to go to the 14th chapter of John. So be doing that right now. And the other thing that we said that we were always gonna do in student ministry here at Pursuit is take great notes. Because when we take those notes, it allows us to go back and reflect on the things that we've learned. It allows us to really get deeper with what it is that God's trying to teach us in a moment. So, as I told you, one of the most common reasons that believers stay away from their Bibles is because they believe or they've told themselves that they simply cannot understand it. But I've got some good news for you, right? Jesus is the good news, but I've got even more good news, and that is that Jesus already took care of this for you. He already took care of understanding for you. If you don't believe me, let's go to that scripture in John 14. So we're gonna go John 14 and verse 26. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, so, so when God the Father sends the advocate, which is the Holy Spirit, and he's sending them as a representative of Jesus Christ, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. So God makes us a promise here. And that promise is, is that when you are a believer in Jesus, when you place your trust in Jesus, when you receive him, when you believe in Jesus, when you accept him and you place your faith in Jesus, you receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is literally the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ that lives in you. A lot of times you'll hear me explain this to you is that still small voice 
that you hear in the deepest recesses of who you are, in your soul and in your heart. That is the Holy Spirit. And for everyone who has placed their faith in Christ that believes in Jesus, they receive the Holy Spirit. And so God has given us this great promise here that that he has sent this Spirit to teach us everything. And everything literally means everything. That means everything in God's holy book, the Bible, and to teach us all about all of the questions that we have. You know, Jesus often, when he was with his disciples in ministry, Jesus would often say things or teach things to the crowd that the disciples just couldn't understand. They just didn't understand it. There were so many times after Jesus would say something that when he got alone with his disciples, his disciples were like, Jesus, yo, bro, like, I don't even understand what that meant. Like, what were you saying? So I don't want you to feel alone. I don't want you to feel like you're the only one that when you open your Bible and you begin to, to, to study scripture, that you're not necessarily understanding what's going on. This even happened to the disciples. And listen, brother, they were hanging out with Jesus. They were hanging out with Jesus and they didn't get it. And so the thing is that Jesus would always do, and he did this in different ways. Jesus did this in different ways. But Jesus would also always make sure that after he taught something when there was an understanding, that he would provide them understanding. So he would either just plainly tell them or he would show them through an example that they could understand. And it even says so many times that he would remind them or they would be reminded of a scripture that fulfilled it. And so Jesus was always teaching them. But I want you to know the disciples had this. And listen, the same thing is happening today through the power of the Holy Spirit. So here's what I wanna share with you today. This is the heart of the message today. I wanna give you seven super practical ways, practical meaning things that you can do every single day of your life to gain understanding about what you're studying in the Bible. And again, it doesn't matter if you're studying a sentence. It doesn't matter if you're studying a scripture. It doesn't matter if you're studying a chapter or an entire book. The same applies. So I want to give you seven practical ways. Now, I told you the way that I like to dwell in God's word every day is is just simply this. I have a place that I've usually determined that I want to study. Right now, I'm studying the book of John, and I invited you guys to come along with me on that reading plan using the Bible app. And right now I'm studying the book of John. In fact, this morning, I just finished up uh, uh, chapter seven, right? Seven days in. And I, I gotta tell you, there are a few of you on here that are listening and are with us tonight that have been right there with me the whole time. We've got people who, who students that have just had perfect uh, daily dwelling in God's word. And I think that's awesome. And so I wanna commend you for that. But today I was dwelling, and what I do when I take in the scripture is I go until I have what I call an aha moment. And maybe you don't know what an aha moment is, but an aha moment to me is just anything that I take, that I study, that I see on the page as I'm reading through it, where I stop and go, hmm. You know, if it makes me pause and think, then God's trying to say something to me. It's an aha moment. It's it's that light bulb moment where something goes off in your head and you go, hmm, I've never seen that before. I've never thought of it that way before. I've never considered that before. And so when we dwell in God's word, it's so important that we have those aha moments that just cause us to pause. But let's look at seven very practical ways that you can gain a deep, deep, deep level of understanding of what Jesus Christ is teaching you in his holy scriptures. Number one, before I take in the scripture, each day I stop and I pray. I pray a very simple prayer. It's not a long prayer. It's not a 20-minute prayer. It's a very simple prayer, and that prayer is this. Holy Spirit, reveal to me today what it is that you would like me to learn. Just simply 
show me today and give me understanding today of what it is that I need to learn from you, Jesus, today. So the first step in understanding what you are about to study is to pray. We're not talking about a long prayer. We're not talking about a 45 minute prayer. It's just a very simple prayer where we ask Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit to give us revelation, which just means to reveal something to us. Number two, this one's really important. This one's really important. Slow down, just slow down. Like I think so many times we see this as a task or a check the box uh, uh, type thing in our life. Like, okay, if I'm gonna be a good Christian, then I've got to open my Bible. I've got to study my Bible every day. And if I do that, I can just check the box. And so what happens when that's the approach, when that's the attitude, here's what happens. You're like, okay, today I'm gonna read John chapter seven. And so you fly through it as fast as you possibly can so you can get on to the next thing in your day, whatever that is. The problem with that approach is you're rarely going to have an aha moment because even though you are studying, there's no comprehension of the text. In fact, many of you in school take these standardized exams and one of the things that the standardized exam measures is reading comprehension. In other words, they, they give you a paragraph, they tell you to read that paragraph, and then there's a measurement that determines how well you understood what you just read. This is very, very similar. You have to slow down, take your time, and not go through God's word like, it's, like you're trying to speed read uh, uh, through an examination or speed read through a, through a book. Like that's not what this is. There are days and times where I might read the same paragraph 15 times, 15 times, because I want a deep understanding of what God is trying to teach me in that paragraph. I don't really care if I get the entire chapter read that day if I dwell in that paragraph and God reveals something in my life. I hope that makes sense to you. So you gotta slow down, it's not a race. Hang out for a while, it's gonna be cool. God's gonna do something amazing. Number three, just ask. Ask and seek. You know, Matthew seven says it like this. Matthew seven in verse seven says it like this. Keep on asking and you, you will receive what you ask for, keep on seeking and you will find. Maybe there's something in your life that you really need an answer to. Maybe there's a problem or maybe there's not a problem. Maybe there's just something you wanna know. Should I date this guy? Should I date that girl? Should I go on this trip? Should I not go on this trip? Whatever, right? But one of the things that we have to do and one of the main ways that God reveals himself to us is when we just simply ask. It kind of goes back to that first point about the prayer. If I take that moment as I'm praying and say, God revealed to me, and I have a question, God, am I supposed to date this girl? God, am I supposed to date that girl? God, am I supposed to go on this mission trip? God, am I supposed to start this ministry at my school? If you will just ask for what it is that you need the answers to, and you will be diligent in that, and you will seek, seek means to go into God's word, dwell on it, go slow, think through it. If you are doing those things, then God promises. He promises. It says in Matthew 7, 7, if you keep on asking, you will receive your answer. I doubt that God is gonna come from heaven and sit in front of you and tell you that answer directly. He could, he could. But more than likely, it's gonna come through his word and your personal prayer and reflection time. Number four, this one we're not good at at all. 
We got to listen. We have to listen. We're really good at asking questions. We're really good at, at giving long prayers and asking for things for ourselves or for others. We really aren't good when it comes to listening. So here's what I mean. A lot of times when I'm studying my Bible, remember I told you, I might have an aha moment in a sentence or a paragraph and I just sit there. I just, I literally just go back over that, pour over that paragraph five, 10, 15, 20 times. And even after I've poured over it that many times, I can sometimes, sometimes I am still a little bit confused or unsure of what God is saying. And that's telling me I need to listen. The way that I listen is I close my eyes, I get in a quiet place, and I just think. I just think about what it was that I studied. And I begin just in my spirit to pray, what does this mean? What are you saying? And the longer I sit there in quietness, in the darkness, in the stillness of God's presence, God always provides me an answer in my soul, in my heart, in my heart. It comes as a still, small voice. I just feel it well up in me in the deepest areas of who I am, and then I, I have an answer in my mind as to what it is that God was trying to teach me. Remember I told you that God's word is a living word. You and I could both read the same scripture, we could both study the same scripture, and depending on the answers we need, God will reveal two different answers to us, both being the truth. It's a beautiful thing. Number five, right after I listen, I love to begin to write. I just begin to write down whatever it is that God told me. There is no better way for you to grow close to God than to begin to write down what it is that he's revealing to you through his holy scripture. Sometimes I write just a sentence. Sometimes I write a paragraph. Sometimes it feels like I'm writing a book. Like I just, I might write for 30 or 45 minutes and in my writings, I'm asking questions. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about things that I feel like God put in my heart. But as I begin to write, my understanding grows and grows and grows, and it grows into a level, level of excitement. And if I'm being completely honest, a lot of the messages that I deliver you come through my personal study time where I have listened, I have dwelled on something, I have begun to write, and then one day I speak it forth to you. So it's so powerful to simply write down what you're thinking and feeling. Number six, use some resources. Listen, there are all kinds of resources uh, through applications and websites that can really help you. One of the ones that I love the most is, a, and you can either go to their website or you can download the app, and I highly recommend that you do this, is a website called Got, G-O-T, Questions. So kind of like Got Milk, but this is Got Questions. And Got Questions is just, it is a phenomenal tool. You can literally go into the search bar of this tool and write down any question that you have or any keyword to a question that you have. And if that question's ever been asked, it has a biblical answer. And let me tell you, they are spot on. They are spot on with God's word. I used, it, I used this tool this morning. I literally use this tool almost every day in my studies of God's word. It will benefit you. Again, it's got questions. Another area or website that you could use as a resource is a website called Bible Hub. Bible Hub. And the beautiful thing about Bible Hub is that not only will it give you the same scripture in every different uh, translation of the Bible that you could possibly want to see it in, it provides you commentary. And if you don't know what commentary is, commentary is just simply a theologian's response 
to what they have read. So a theologian being someone who has studied the scriptures, who is a, a supposed expert in the scriptures. Now I wanna be clear, you don't have to be a theologian to understand the scriptures, you don't have to be. I'm a common man, I'm not a theologian. God's Holy Spirit will, will reveal to you his scriptures, but sometimes it is helpful to look to other believers for what they took out of the context of the scripture. So you've got resources, you're not in this alone. And then lastly, number seven is discuss it. Listen, you've got small group leaders, each one of you have small group leaders. If you join us only online and you don't know your small group leader, please, 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 DM us at pursuit.students because our small group leaders wanna include you, our online audience, the same way as our in-person uh, in, in audience. So make sure you let us know what grade you're in and we wanna get your small group leader connected with you. But discuss it, discuss it with other believers. If you, if you studied something and you're still kinda chewing on it, you're not sure, Take that opportunity just to take it to your small group leader, to take it to other believers and just discuss it. What do you think? Have you ever uh, studied this? What does it mean to you? Like you have community. So there are seven really practical ways that we just covered. Number one, pray. Number two, go slow. Number three, ask and seek. Number four, listen. Number five, write. Number six, use your resources. And number seven, discuss. So as I close tonight, I wanna remind you, listen, we are better together. Like we get better together. God even says it in his Proverbs. He says, listen, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So when we get in this thing together, man, we cannot be broken and we can be successful. And maybe you thought that you're somebody who could never, ever, ever, much less pick up a Bible, but understand it, but you are. And together we can do this thing. So I wanna encourage you, if you've not joined our reading plan, we have got a reading plan started, and, and we're not calling it a reading plan, we're calling it a dwelling plan, but unfortunately the Bible app calls it a reading plan, so that's how I have to describe it. But we are in the book of John, so you can do a couple things. One, you can download the Bible app. If you don't have it, you're downloading the version Bible app. Once you download that app, you can then go to a link that's on our Instagram page at pursuit.students and it will invite you into the plan. But let's say none of that works for you. All you have to do is find me on there, make a friend request, and then I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you personally. Listen, we are having a great time going through this together and I'm learning as much as our students are learning. In fact, I'm even learning from our students. So we want you to be a part of that. Don't miss it. And maybe you're sitting here thinking, well, my goodness, you guys are already seven days in. I'm way behind. You're not. You're not. You can start today. It's never too late to start. So I want to encourage you before I leave tonight, I want to encourage you this. Like, don't miss this, team. Don't miss this, guys. Don't miss it. God wants to do something incredible in your lives. He wants to radically alter this generation. But he cannot radically alter. You cannot. He can do anything he wants to. You cannot be a game changer without God. God loves you so much that he wrote you a book. He wrote you a book, and if you would just dwell in it and pray upon it, he would give you some revelation and understanding in your life that's gonna blow your mind. So we wanna thank God tonight in my closing for him loving us so much that not only he sent his only son, Jesus, to die for our sins, but he left us a book. He left us a book. We can get in the presence of the almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, any time we want to. We can hear directly from his mouth, the mouth of God in our hands. So join me tonight.